Hello everybody and welcome back to M&J Games. I am Michael and it's been a little bit since um, Jasmine and I have done a tutorial but today we are going to look at how to create a dual loading station within Planet Coaster. And so as you can see we have one coaster track but yet we have two stations. And so the key is that one of them is overlaid on another. And so ultimately this is the end result of what we're going to be working on today in terms of me going over with you in the tutorial which it's not overly complicated the key is how your coasters exit and how they enter sorry how they exit the station how they're going to enter the station and so I hope you guys all enjoy this tutorial so this is going to be the end result that we're going to be looking at so let me go ahead and um, jump back to where these coasters are not actually in the park yet all right, so first thing I need to do is I'm going to place the blueprint of the coaster that I created. So let me find my creations. And as you can see, this is the flying coaster. This is the flying coaster by itself. And so let's place it in a good location. All right, let's just do here for, for right now. All right, so... Here's the key. You notice how I curved or rounded this entry into the station and exit from the station. Because the key is for us to do a dual loading station, as you saw before, I need to have the same degree going this way. We want it to be symmetrical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this coaster down again. And I need to make sure it's facing the same direction and it's the same height. So what I'm going to do is oh, actually no, that's not facing the same direction. <laughs> I was wondering what was going on. So I was like, it's like it's already facing the way it should. All right, there we go. So now what I'm going to do is I can't overlay it, and you'll see why that is in a second. But I'm going to get it close enough. Um, and so now what I need to do is I go here and I'm going to have to edit this coaster. I now need to delete the station because for some reason you can overlay track, but you can't overlay the station. Oh, and one thing I forgot to say, you got to go to settings and you have to make sure to disable coaster collision is on. Because if that's not on, it's not going to allow you to overlay track onto track. Okay, so I'm going to delete this I right, keep that as is all right so now I'm going to shift actually no, yeah so now I'm going to shift this over here and so now look it's it's not going to necessarily be perfect so if you can like look here you can kind of see where it's just a little bit off um, because and in my working on this, it I have yet to get it absolutely perfect. But that is something that you just can't even tell unless you are looking really, really close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this coaster. So we see how it's at a 33.75 degree turn. So I need to do that same degree the opposite way. Same thing here. 33.75 that direction. And then I'm going to go 33.75 back that direction. And now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this component here, delete that one, same thing as before, 33.75 to this side, make this go back to zero, or negative 33.75. And now, I'm going to complete my station. But what I want to do is I want to show you this, this cool trick too, is, hold on, let me see. Okay, so they're going to go... Yeah, so now as you can see, these coasters are overlaid. Let's see, I want to edit this station. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's go this way. And you'll see why. So you can see now, the exits are right across from each other. So, let me go ahead and lift these up, because in a second, we are going to actually open the coasters up and open up the park so that I can show you how magnificently this works in terms of being able to have the trains run and so forth. So, 
as you can see, they're both starting to test. Well, I guess they're not testing. I thought they were. So I'm going to test one coaster. I'm going to wait about 20 seconds and then start the other one. Because if you start them both at the same time, they're both going to leave the station at the same time. So once this one gets to the lift hill, I'll, I'll test the other one. And you see how this other one's coming to the station. And hey, there was a coaster, another coaster there. So those were actually overlaid. So now I'm testing that one. And now you can see. We now have four coasters on the track. Um, and you could probably just do it with two. One in each station to be safe if you wanted to. Um, now there is no guarantee that these coasters will not necessarily run into each other at some point but i i think there i think i found a way to make that almost impossible or very very rare and it's called create a ride chain and i'll show you more about that in a second um so let me go ahead and change this time to daytime so before we create our paths or anything one thing you can do like i was just talking about is you can create a ride chain so if you go over here to the color area actually you know what it's to the settings add ride to chain I can then select that one confirm selection and what that does is it has the two lined up to where they leave at the exact same time so if I close that one and I close this one and I start this one testing it's not actually gonna go until this one's ready to go too so now you see actually maybe I was incorrect with that yeah so let's see watch this as this coaster comes in the station what's going on with this one? Oh yeah you see they're waiting because they were on a chain so they were chained up meaning they had to leave at the same time but there's a solution to this and I tried this out the other day and it worked with guests so I'll show you that in a second what you can do is you can change one of these in advanced settings to a minimum wait time or departure. So instead of keeping it at three seconds, um, you can change this to like 10 seconds or something like that. Because what that does is it gives, um, you're given more space in between departure times to allow for the coaster to get further along on the track and so forth. So let's just say, let's just, I guess 10 is the longest time you can go. So we'll keep it at 10 seconds. And then we got to apply this. So now what we need to do is we need to connect our paths just so we can allow some guests to come in and enjoy the experience. I don't really care about the path at this point. Um, and then that's one cool thing too is if they both exit out the same way, you can just kind of have one exit path because I believe... If I remember correctly, that's how Superman is, at least the one in um, in Atlanta. So, like I said, I'm not trying to do anything special here with the queue. Alright. Same thing here with the other one. Oops. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's see, park is already open. So I'm going to wait till there are some guests about ready to get on the coaster. We are going to test these to get all the stats, and then we are going to officially open the ride. So I'll see you guys in a couple minutes. All right, so I admit I was wrong about the coaster chain. Um, adding it to the coaster chain was not effective. It, I thought it was going to wait, but that other, like I thought this one would be different, but this one waited the extra 10 seconds for this one to leave. And so now what you can see is this coaster here has a little bit longer of a wait time before it goes, which I guess it's waiting for, yeah, it's, it's waiting for some more. So now you can see they're on different timing or different times, different routes that one goes. And so the key is that the first couple might leave around the same time, but usually after that it's going to change. Um, 
So as you can see here, once again, this one's got a longer wait time in terms of minimum wait time in between each departure. But you can kind of get an idea here that, I mean, we got four coasters that are running on the track. And, I mean, obviously from a realism standpoint, this isn't perfect and ideal because, like, he, okay, so here, every once in a while I might end up like this, right? Where you have it, um, they're basically overlapping, and it's actually going to, once this first one starts going, um, there'll be a little bit of space in between. Because this one's going to kind of hang over, but then it's going to get going before the other one. So... That's going to happen from time to time. That's kind of unavoidable in terms of the... But it's not going to happen as, as, as often as you might think. So you can see the wait time, right? Those are They're waiting a little bit more. And so to me, this is really the only way that I know of to create a dual loading station. But I think it's super cool. And I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Um... Is this tutorial helpful? Is there any other questions that you have from this? Or do any of you maybe know how you can link it up, but yet they don't leave at the same time? Because I don't think that's actually possible. Um, but yeah, so this is a way if you wanted to try to create a Superman-style ride or anything like that, that you have that ability to. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure and comment on it, hit that like button, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.